Yes, indeed, folks. You are listening to Blue Please right here on CynicalBrit.com with my self-total biscuit. So, folks. Would you like some more content? I'm sure you would. I'm going to do one more segment, and then I will do the Illusion of Choice, and, of course, shout-outs at the end of the show. So, it'll be a little longer than usual. I'm sure people won't mind all that much. We'll do what we can. So, I want to talk about 4.2, and why exactly 4.2 is, sadly, not as good as I hoped it would be thus far. Bear in mind, this is all coming off of the PTR content that I've seen up until this point, so... Don't turn around and say, oh, well, there's all this other stuff. Well, yes, but this is what I've seen thus far. That's the point. So, let's have a think about it, shall we? What have I seen currently on the PTR? So, I've seen about eight minutes of the raiding because the servers have been so damn unstable that nobody's really been able to do anything except for Method, inexplicably. Lord knows how, but somehow Method have not only managed to do the content, but they were also given access by a GM to the Legendary Quest, being, I believe, the only guild that were given access to that. That's a, that's a bit dodgy, honestly, but there you go. I don't know what the hell is going on with that. I have no idea exactly how they've managed to stay on the servers, but I can tell you for a fact that nobody else can. Lot of problems with it. Lot of problems. Keeps What happens is it keeps falling over, and... You start running around and you realize you don't see anyone else running around. You can't interact with anything and you can't do anything. And none of your abilities work, so you log out. And then when you come back, it says character with that name already exists. And you get stuck off the server for about five freaking hours. It's such a wonderful thing. I'm so glad to be a PTR tester. Oh, God. So, yeah, that's, that's not the best situation to be in, honestly. I can think of things I would rather do, like pulling out my own teeth with my eyes. That would be good. Aside from that, though, I've spent an awful lot of time doing the daily questing content, since a lot of the content that is coming in 4.2 is actually dailies. Bear this in mind. Something that people need to keep in their heads. So, a lot of it is based around the Firelands. Uh, Yes, sorry. I'm yawning just thinking about it. A lot of it is based around the Firelands, and a lot of it is also based around Hygel, and they're pretty much linked together. So you have to do some of the Hygel stuff first before you get into the Firelands, and you're not restricted to going to the Firelands raid. You can go in the Firelands raid whenever you like, but if you want to go into the actual Molten Front, as they call it, which is another bit of the Firelands that looks very, very similar to the raid, then you have to... One, have finished all of the Hygel stuff, because it's all phased. And two, then complete five days' worth of gated dailies before you are allowed in. What happens is you've got to get... It can actually be more than five days, because right now, for some reason, you're not always getting quests that will give you four marks of the world tree every day. For instance, Jesse Cox, I think, got stuck outside of there for seven, possibly eight days, which is fairly lousy. Don't worry, he's not missing anything interesting. So, what ends up happening after that? Well, once you've got that, you get access to the the portal, which will get you into the Molten Front, and then you get access to another set of dailies. And then you realize that in order to get through to the next bit, you have to get 150 marks. That's a lot of marks. Now, you can do quests inside the Molten Front, and you can do quests outside in Hygel in order to get these. But I'm estimating it'll probably take you... Considering that you do get a couple more quests afterwards for dailies, probably take you about 10 to 11 days worth of constant questing in order to unlock the next bit. And there are two things like this. There's two objectives that require 150 marks each, and you've got to pick one of them, but you don't know which is the better one. So it's pretty much a case of picking them at random. I'm sure we'll figure it out on the PTR, and then we can tell you, look, this one sucks. I mean, I haven't been doing it much lately because there's been no point. It's too many DCs and things like that, so I haven't really bothered with it, but... The content itself isn't very good. This is the problem. And I don't know if it's good in compar- or not very good in comparison to other dailies, but I know for a fact that as a set of content that they expect me to do on a daily basis, it is dull. Dull as dishwater. Yes, dishwater is pretty damn dull, if you hadn't already realized this. Have you got a situation where dishwater wasn't dull? Was it perhaps filled with man-eating piranha? In which case, I suppose, then maybe. But then again, I don't know if man-eating piranha could actually survive in dishwater. More to the point, how many of the damn things could you get in a dish? Who knows? So it's not going to be that interesting, regardless of whether or not that's there. So, 
This content is repetitive, and it lacks any semblance of challenge, and it's repetitive, and it lacks any semblance of challenge, and it's repetitive, and wait a minute. So, to me, this is what dailies were always, and I don't mean always about, with the exception of stuff like the Ogre Last thing. I mean, if you have a look at Ogre Last, for instance, and the whole gathering the shards... I can't even remember the damn names of the shards, but those shards that you had to gather in order to do that big boss fight in the minion control game in the middle of the area. That, the Apexus shards, that's the one, yes, the Apexus shards, the Apexus crystals. So, that was cool. And that was actually kind of hard, and it took a lot of practice to get that right, and there were guides and stuff like that. You don't need guides to this current stuff because it's very, very obvious and easy. For instance, a lot of it is just kill a bunch of dudes, which is not very entertaining. Usually the structure of it is, at least in the Hydel dailies, is you'll get two quests. One will be kill a bunch of dudes, another will be do something else, and then you'll get a follow-up to one of those quests, which is kill this big dude. The thing is, big dude can't actually kill you. He doesn't have the necessary skill to do so. He's a bit of a scrub, you see. You could stand there and just take punishment from him, and he is an elite, but it doesn't matter. You can still beat him down solo anyway. And it doesn't matter, because the chances are people will help you with it, because there is no tagging. So... Everybody gets credit, which is awesome, assuming that you are not looking for any kind of challenge. Now, these bosses do have abilities that you should have to move out of the way of, but the thing is you don't have to do that, because, generally speaking, you're going to run into it, and then you'll find 20 other people who are also on the same quest, and then they just, like, fire off an ice lance at it, and they've got the credit, and then, oh, look, they've just DPS this thing down in about five seconds. It's a huge mob of guys just jumping on every time this thing spawns. They trigger the spawn, they kill the boss. They trigger the spawn, they kill the boss. They get the credit every single time, because, of course, you don't have that tagging problem. And that's not very interesting. There are other quests, like, collect five of these roots. That isn't interesting. There's the one called the Flock, which I've now done six times, and is boring the hell out of me. I'm thankful that calling the Flock can actually be done in a very short period of time, because you have this buff that gets stacked on you. It accelerates your speed. It's very, very useful. Causes you to zoom around like a maniac. Assuming that you can click it within the range of the birds. The main problem is that once there's a lot of people there, that quest is going to be a nightmare. Because when you click the call to call the flock in the area, those birds disappear for everybody else. It's okay on the PTR right now, because there's not a lot of people doing that quest, but on live, it's going to be awful. That I can guarantee. They're going to have to have an absurd spawn rate for the birds, and even then, I don't think it's going to work out. Because you're going to be rushing for a bird, and then someone with a slightly faster... It's the bus called Saw. So they've got slightly higher stacked saw buff, goes past you, grabs the bird, then your saw buff wears off, and you're back to moving quite slowly, at which point you start stabbing things. And no, it's not phased, unfortunately, so you don't get your own copy of it. So that's not all that entertaining. There is one that you unlock after the Firelands, where this is after you unlock the Firelands, which is to go and heal a certain character. I don't want to ruin it for those of you who are actually concerned about the lore. So, it's a certain character that needs to be healed. <coughs> and in order to do that on a daily basis, you have to go over with a few NPCs and kill some elites in a certain area. Which is kind of alright, because they occasionally use a raid-style ability, and also fighting with those NPCs is pretty cool, because you end up fighting with Mancrick and also Death Guard Darnell. That's pretty awesome. I like that, but that's not going to get... In yeah, it's, it's only interesting the first time. It's like, oh my god, these minor lore characters are here fighting with me. Isn't that great? And then, of course, the day after that, oh my god, these same minor lore characters are here fighting with me. Isn't that okay? And then the third day, it's oh, wow, the same minor lore characters are here fighting with me again. This is not fun. <laughs> this is the problem with dailies as a whole. If dailies are not difficult, then dailies are just work. That's all they are. Now, I'm okay with them existing, and I've always been okay with them existing. Hell, there were actually some pretty reasonable dailies available in TBC, and a few in Wrath as well. But these dailies are not an advancement of what I would have expected. And I think it's relying too much on the phasing thing. Because the way that the Firelands works is that the Molten Front phases. The thing is, it doesn't phase that much. It takes a long time for it to phase. As far as I have to imagine... 
that the first phasing event is going to happen about 10 to 12 days after you start doing the questing in there, because that's when you get 150 marks, and you then go and complete one of the quests for Malfury and Stormrage, which involves basically getting the help of something. I think one of them gets the help of the Shadow Wardens, for instance, then the other does something else about summoning some dude. And I imagine that's when it phases, and there's probably a phase after that as well. Now, I have no problem with spacing out the content. Don't get me wrong here. I think this is a bit of a false accusation that a lot of people have made. It's like, oh, well, you've complained that there's not enough content, and now you're complaining that there is content which takes you a long time to do. How is that reasonable? Well, I don't mind gated content as long as the content going up to that gate is interesting. If it's repetitive, I don't like it. To me, it seems like these quests should actually have a challenge element to them. I was looking at some of the other stuff, like, for instance, sealing the portal. There's a one way you take a wisp to seal a fire portal in the Firelands. That isn't that hard either. You just... I mean, for me, I just press the blizzard button over and over again, everything dies, and then I'm okay. The thing is that the stuff barely hits that hard, so even if you don't have a major AoE spell, you can still cut your way through it anyway. I mean, it's not a challenge. There's another one which involves healing a bunch of druids. Now, what I do like about that is that if you're a healer, you can actually heal with your healing spell, which is awesome because that means you can do it from a range. Unfortunately, that's going to end up frustrating a huge number of people. And you want to know why that is? Because if you're not a healer, you have to run over with a salve, and you've got to get within touching range. I can just see that happening. Oh, cool. Someone I can heal, and then some healer 40 yards away is healing him. You get there, it's suddenly healed. Oh, thank you, healer X. You are the best. I'm like, I was right here. Where's the love, damn it? So that's going to end up being horrible as well. That I can guarantee. So... I, I would like to say that I was impressed by the fact they've got all this amazing daily content. The problem is they don't. There's no challenge in any of it. It is all really easy. Can we not have some more things like that Ogrelar stuff? I mean, maybe there's something that cool at the end. I know, for instance, that later on, you have to fight these boss-ish mobs, but I'm fairly sure that you can take them solo. And they have raid style abilities. It's actually an achievement for dodging those raid style abilities. That's okay. But... Can we have something that actually takes a lot of time to figure out, like that ogre laughing? Even if it requires you to use minions. I'm alright with using minions. I'm okay with controlling vehicles and stuff like that. It's kind of neat, because you can make scenarios that otherwise wouldn't be available for a lot of classes. So, I don't see the problem with that. I don't really think we need another bombing run, honestly, because bombing runs were never really that hard anyway, unless, of course, they were timed. In this case, though, we do have a set of content that is not challenging and it doesn't really get me going. Is it just me that hates dailies? Can someone please answer me this? Is it just me? Maybe it is. Maybe everybody else really loves dailies. I don't. Now, Footman actually had a great suggestion here in the chat room. Which is, how about giving extra marks for dodging abilities, and extra marks for not overhealing NPCs, etc. Extra rewards for good play. That's a cool idea. I like that a lot. I mean, you could tie them in very easily to, say, the saw ability, like in Call of the Flock. Hey, you managed to do this in a couple of minutes. You just got a bunch of extra marks. That's, that's alright. That accelerates the process for not sucking. That's a good suggestion. I like that a lot. I would like to see that. But I would also like to see stuff that is genuinely challenging. Unfortunately, the 4.2 Hydra stuff at this point in time is not. And that, to me, is highly disappointing. A lot of people are saying dailies are useless. I don't like them. I don't blame you. I think dailies are for people that have very, very limited time and want to log in and feel they've achieved something. Dailies are actually the culmination of Blizzard's questing strategy for the past six years. You remember when the game came out? I keep mentioning this fact, but it's very useful because it actually gives a great insight into what made this game so popular to begin with. And that's the fact that it's bite-sized content. You did a quest and you got a present for it. You got a treat at the end. And that was part of a very successful... I suppose it would be an accessibility coup, really. More so than any other game, they made World of Warcraft accessible to people that didn't have a huge amount of time, and people felt like they'd genuinely gotten something out of it. The problem is that that concept has stayed here for six years and has been used on content that is repetitive. The thing about questing is that you go to different places, and you might kill... It might still be kill 10 boars, but they're magic boars, or they're hell boars, or they're fire boars, or they're plague boars, or they're flying boars. 
and they're in a different place. But dailies aren't. Dailies are actually the very definition of repetitive because they are the same quest over and over again. There's not even any different quest text. Nothing changes. They are not dynamic in any respect. And regardless of the fact that some of these dailies are random, so you don't get the same one every time, people will still get bored of it. And that's a problem. So, yeah. I would like to see more. I want to see what's happening with the Legendary line. I want to see what's happening with Elemental Bonds. See how good that is. But so far, I have not been impressed by the 4.2 daily questing content all that much. It's certainly better than some dailies in the game, but that doesn't mean dailies in general are a great concept. My name is Total Biscuit. You are listening to the one and only Blue Please right here on CynicalBrit.com. I am going to be right back after this. What can we play? Hmm. And I'll play... I don't know. I like this song by Dragon Force. It's one of their older songs. I think it's awesome. Uh, it's, it really is one of their older songs. So I'm going to play it anyway, and it's suitable, because, hey, fire. This one's called Blackfire. Enjoy. <laughs> 